Ah, back out here live once again. Where? Aquaponics Paradise. Bringing you the heat, the flames, and the fire. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm ready to roll today. I'm pumped. I ate about 50,000 vegetables. These are almost wiped out. I'm getting ready to get rid of those today. I'm pumped right now. The energy's flowing. Come on with me. Come on. Let's get it. We about to talk aquaponics. We about to talk. Hold on. Woo! Let's go. So today what we're going to be talking about are my top 10 favorite leafy greens to grow in aquaponics. Now, when we're talking about leafy greens, I'm referring to a herbaceous plant that is soft stemmed um, in contrast to a woody stem uh, vegetable. So the stems are, gonna, stems are gonna be soft, edible, something that you can slap your lips on, cook, raw, whatever you like. So if you're someone that's interested or you like growing um, leafy greens, from my personal opinion and experience, there's no other production method that's gonna outperform aquaponics when it comes to leafy greens. This is where aquaponics really shines at, your leafy green production. Aquaponics is the creme de la creme when it comes to growing leafy greens. It's just, those leafy greens are just very adaptable to aquaponic production. They're very um, suitable for aquaponic production, you know, and they, they thrive. So with that being said, Let's jump right into it. I'm going to start off with my number 10 vegetable that I like to grow, and that is a vegetable by the name of Mizuna. Now, Mizuna, this is a, um, it's an Asian green. It's an Asian mustard green. Um, I like growing this thing, and I like chopping it up. I like putting it in salads. Um, I like to um, uh, uh, cook it and put it in soups. It grows very well. I grow it in the, um, the floating raft, grow it in the, uh, the NFT. It can be grown in pretty much all the systems and it grows, you know, it grows very well, it thrives. You're pretty much talking about somewhere around 40 days for it to grow if you're in the, you know, in, in the right season and you're gonna get some good production out of it. You can chop it, let it come back and it'll keep growing for a certain amount of time um, before it begins to produce uh, a seed or go to flower and produce seed. So, with that being said, Mizuna is a very, very um, uh, uh, good plant that I like to grow, and it serves me well. So with that being said, let's go to number nine. The number nine plant that I like to grow is mustard greens. Now with mustard greens, I grow these um, a few times throughout the year. I can grow them in the, um, the floating raft. I can grow them in the NFT. I've grown them in the media beds before. Pretty much all the systems they'll grow, uh, uh, grow in and they'll perform uh, pretty well. Um, it takes about, you know, somewhere around 40, 45 days to grow some uh, mustard greens. There's a few types that I grow. The Southern um, style, the Southern Giants, which I don't really like that much um, because they have, you know, a pretty strong kick to them. Pretty strong kick to them. What I prefer is I like to grow this, um, a variety called Red Giant. This is the Japanese mustard green. Fire, fire. These right here, the, um, the, sub, the, uh, the red giants, I can cook those up with some tilapia and it has just enough of that spice to it, that kick to it to give it a little touch in the flavor. Some people out here in the um, South, we're down here in Florida, they like the super strong flavor. They don't like the little small karate kick. They want that Bruce Lee kick. Wop, they want that. So they'll eat those Southern greens. Um, I had given my, um, my daughter's grandfather, I gave him a, a, a sample of the, um, the Red Giants and woo, he lost his mind. He said, I don't want no more of those Southern Giants no more. I don't want the Southern style no more. He only wants the Red Giants now. So that's what we deal with. So if you haven't had a chance to um, slap your lips on some Red Giants, I would highly, highly advise that you go ahead and grow some of those. You won't go wrong if you like Southern Greens. You know, if, I mean, if you like the uh, mustard greens, you like a little spice in your stuff, go ahead and grow them. They grow very well in aquaponics. Like I said, you know, 40, 45 days, somewhere around there, and you got yourself some mustard greens. Now, moving on to vegetable number eight. What is it? Let me see. Tot soy. I actually got some tot soy growing right now. Just planted some. Tot soy, these are another uh, a variety of Asian greens. They grow very well. Now, I don't really, I, grow, I try to grow them a few times 
in the floating raft. Didn't really like the production out of it. I usually stick to the NFT when I'm growing these. Phenomenal growth. Phenomenal growth. They grow very well. Some, for some reason, these things, they remind me of like a Ninja Turtle shell when they grow out. I don't know about you. Maybe it's just my imagination, but for some reason, they look like the Ninja Turtle shell every time I look at them when, when, they're, when they're growing out. So Tatsoi is another one of my favorites. We're talking about somewhere around 40 days to grow, 40, you know, 40, 45 days to grow, and you got yourself some Tatsoi. With these, I can eat these raw. Um, a lot of the times I'll put them in some soups and, or I'll cook them on the um, skillet with some uh, uh, fish or chicken if I'm in the mood for eating some, um, some meat. But nonetheless, these things are fire. They taste uh, very good, has a mild flavor to it. So it's something that you can enjoy. It doesn't, you know, it's not going to overtake whatever um, uh, meal that you have. It's not going to overtake it with, the, with, the, with its flavor. So I think it's something that a lot of you guys will like if you have not had a chance to slap your lips on them, right? So from Tokyo Bacana, we'll be moving into number, <laughs> Tokyo Bacana. I mean, from Tatsoi, we'll be moving into the number seven, which is Tokyo Bacana. Now, the reason why I like growing Tokyo Bacana is because they have a smooth taste and texture to them. It's a good replacement for um, salads, or uh, excuse me, for lettuce. Here, we're out, of the, um, the, we're out of the lettuce growing season now. It's March now, spring is uh, uh, rolling in, and you know, it's the, the temperatures are warming up. Today is kind of cold, but the next few days and all that, it's all the way up. We're going to the set, high 70s, high 80s, and that's it. There's no more lettuce. Lettuce is over with. You can kiss it goodbye. So a good replacement that I like to uh, slap in there is Tokyo Bacana. Very good. Like I said, the texture, it's going to remind you of, sal of, uh, of lettuce. So if you're a lettuce fanatic, you live in a hot area, Tokyo Bacana is an Asian green. A lot of the Asian greens are adapted or um, adaptable to hot weather. So this is a good, good, good green for those that like lettuce, but it's just a little bit too hot. Now with Tokyo Bacana, we're talking about somewhere around 45 days for it to grow. It doesn't really have a lot of pest problems. You know, it comes out smooth. Like I said, I use it for salads. I eat it raw, or I might slap it in some soup. I might slap it in some soup. I don't really like to cook these because I don't really like the texture when you cook it. So I'll just, you know, put it in some soup, nice little boil to it, or I just eat it raw. And I got me some Tokyo Bacana. Love, love Tokyo Bacana. I think I got some of those planted too right now. And um, those are going to serve me very well throughout the rest of the season. All right. So from there, number six, what do we got for number six? Collard greens. Now, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, with collard greens. With collard greens, I don't really grow these things because I want to eat them. Let me tell you something. I grow the collard greens primarily because I like to see the reaction of the people who come and they want to get uh, uh, collard greens. My neighbors, you know, sometimes if I'll put it up and allow certain people to come and uh, purchase them, I like to see the reaction. You know, we're down, like I said, we're down here in the south and people go crazy over some collards. I don't know what it is, man, but these people love some collards down, down here. They'll pay top dollar for some collard greens grown on a farm, especially where they can come and get them fresh off the farm. These guys will pay top dollars. And I'm telling you right now, if you got a whole batch full of collard greens, you better have a security dog, some, some security cameras, because somebody's coming in with the ski mask and taking all your collard greens, right? They're taking them all by the bundles, right? They're taking them all. I mean, I'm, of course, I'm over-exaggerating, but just to show you how much people appreciate collars down here. They love these things, man. So I grow them pretty much just for that. I eat them sometimes, but they're not really my thing. They're a little bit too tough on the texture. Um, if they're a baby salad green, I'm messing with them. But, you know, a fully grown, mature uh, collar, it's not really my thing. Now, my neighbor over here, Danny, some of you guys have seen him in the video. You can't pay this man to eat vegetables. You can't pay him to eat no vegetables. But collard greens, he will slap his lips on some, on some collard greens. He will get those. He, you know, he's, gonna, he's not going to eat them raw, but he'll put them in there. he have his wife cook them up. They'll boil them up. And, you know, he has to slap his hot sauce on there, Louisiana hot sauce, uh, Red Rooster hot sauce. I bet you it's probably one of those. And then he'll eat them. But other than that, you can't, you can't pay Danny to eat no vegetables. He's not eating them. 
My other neighbor over here, Alonzo, he will eat. He'll eat vegetables for sure. He loves collard greens too, but he grows them. He grows them over there in the, in the ground. He ain't getting more, he ain't getting better production than me, but nonetheless, he still grows them and he still sells them. So those are the collard greens, ladies and gentlemen. They grow very well. We're talking about, I grow uh, flash collards, champion collards, somewhere around 55, 60 days, um, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe 65 days for, um, for uh, certain varieties. But they grow well, and you can keep, you can keep plucking them off, and they'll keep growing back. Uh, pluck the bottom leaves, and then they'll keep growing back. So those are the collard greens. Those are coming in at number six. I like to grow those. Now, coming in at number five, the notorious lettuce. Now here's the thing with lettuce. I don't get too many months to grow lettuce out here, you know, in the subtropical climate that I'm living in. So I like to get it in when it's time for me to get it in. I did grow a good amount of lettuce, you know, for the winter time, the past winter. And it served me well. I grew it, uh, grew lettuce, a fruit, a few varieties in the floating raft. And I got some uh, growing, I grew some in the, um, the NFT as well. And they work phenomenal, phenomenal. Now here I had grew some uh, romaine lettuce um bib lettuce some leaf lettuce nft i grew um some leaf lettuce and some uh salanova it was my first time growing the salanova those actually came out really good the salanova came out really good if you haven't had a chance get you some salanova those come out really good the bib lettuce is just on another level i'm not even gonna lie to you bib lettuce in aquaponics is just on another level i mean it's when you taste those things I mean, we're talking about something that's just smooth across the tongue. We're talking about so smooth, I'll eat it raw. without. I don't want no salad dressing. I don't want nothing on it. Just give it to me. I'm just eating it like it's, like, like, like it's popcorn. You know, it's that good. It's that good. Now, obviously, if you haven't been, if you're not accustomed to eating vegetables, it's going to take some time to get your palate um, accustomed to eating vegetables. But once you get it going and then you know what vegetables are supposed to taste like, when you eat you some of the bib lettuce... Man, I'm telling you right now, it's going to change your life. It's going to change your life. So those are going to be, those are always going to be on the list, the bib lettuce. It's something just smooth, you know, um, it goes down very well, and they just grow very well in aquaponics. And the good thing about growing lettuce is I don't have too many pest problems when it comes to lettuce. Not too many pest problems in this area. So the romaine, the, um, the bib, the, uh, the leaf lettuce, all those, I haven't really, haven't really had too many pest problems. The romaine lettuce did have a little bit of pest problems, but the leaf, you know, the bib lettuce, the salanova, you know, hardly no pest problems at all. Um, with romaine, we're talking about somewhere around 57 days, you know, for it to mature. The, um, the bib, somewhere around, I think it was like somewhere around 46 days, 46 to 50 days. The leaf lettuce, you know, somewhere around there as well depending on the size you uh, want to grow it. I've got one in here right now that's been growing. Man, I think I've been growing that thing for about 60, 70, 70, 60 or 70 days. And it's got a big afro, right? It's a big old afro. So I'm gonna probably finish that off uh, maybe today or tomorrow and that'll be a wrap for the, le for the lettuce. So, boom, we got our lettuce. Now, coming in at number four, pak choy. Now, pak choy, has always been one of my favorite vegetables to grow in aquaponics. And because it's just a hardy vegetable, very, very hardy vegetable to grow, not too many pest problems either. And like I said, it's just a hardy vegetable. It can grow well in the floating raft. The NFT, I got some growing right now too. Um, and the media bed, it'll grow well. Vertical, it'll grow. All the systems, it grows well. Now, we're talking about somewhere around, I think it's around 56 days, 57 days for um, uh, a few varieties of the, uh, the pak choy. Now, when I'm talking about pak choy, I'm also including, because it's going to be under different names, bok choy, joy choy. I'm referring to all those. I'm adding, all, I'm lumping all those in there. So all those are included. Now, some of those are going re uh, to require um, a little bit less amount of days to maturity, and some may require a little bit more, upwards of about 60 days. So then you got you some fresh uh, pak choy. I uh, chopped them up. Now with these, I eat the stems too. I eat the stems. So I like to chop it up. I'll chop those up and then I'll put those and I'll uh, fry those with some fish. And these come out fire. Fire. Man, when you finish with them, you get to looking around like, man, 
I can't even believe these things are on here on the planet, man. With all these nutrients in there and they taste this good, man, people are missing out. I'm gonna let you know right now, people are missing out. So, pak choy, fire, absolute, you know, very hardy. They grow well in the summertime here. They're Asian green as well, so they're adapted to the heat. They grow very well, and it's something that I recommend those of you who have not tried it, you might want to try it and see if it's something that you like. Now, next on the list, number three, we got Swiss chard. Oh man, one of the superfoods, packed with nutrition, highly nutritious, a lot of vitamins, a lot of minerals, easy to grow. They grow well in the floating, they grow all the systems. They grow well in all the systems. I got some growing right now. I've been harvesting and plucking on them for the past uh, week or so, and um, they've, been, they've been serving me well. I got some, um, some orange, I can't remember the exact name, orange like Bennett or something like that. One of those uh, the varieties that's growing, it's an orange variety of the Swiss chard, and it grows very well. The thing I like about Swiss chard, like I said, it doesn't have a lot of um, pest problems either. Grows smooth, um, and it has a nice mild taste to it. Now, there's a few varieties. The, uh, the, I think it's Orange Bennett, I can't remember, so excuse me for that. I can't remember the exact name that I'm growing right now, but it's Orange something. There's the, uh, the Ruby Red, and there's the, uh, the Rainbow Chard, which is also good. Now, the Ruby Red, I don't really mess with that one that much. It has, every time I grow it, it has like a tangy taste to it. So I don't really mess with that one that much. But the rainbow chard and the orange um, chard that I have, these things uh, taste very well, are, are very, very good. I had some of these in some pasta that I just made. I blended it in there, kind of boiled it in there, and it came out smooth. Came out smooth. So chard is something that I always like growing. It's one of my favorite uh, uh, crops to grow. Highly nutritious, and it serves me well. You can even juice these things and you're gonna get a lot of uh, nutrition out of it. So once again, these are good. Good for um, beginners, something that I would highly recommend and something that you should slap on your list if it's something that you have not um, uh, had a chance to get your hands on before. Um, coming in at number two, the infamous, one and only, the kale. Now kale, ladies and gentlemen, this is something serious. Kale is some serious. This is one of the first crops that I really started growing. Kale. Um, there's a few varieties that I like growing. The, the blue curl kale. Um, my favorite, the dinosaur kale or the lacinato kale. The red harbor kale, which is this right here. That's the red harbor kale. The red Russian kale. That's another kale that I like growing. All these kales, you know, they all um, grow very well in aquaponics. You can grow them in the floating raft. All the systems, so I don't have time to even name them all. You can grow them in all the systems in aquaponics, and they will serve you well. A lot of vitamins and nutrients in uh, kale. This is a superfood right here. High in vitamin K, vitamin A, vitamin C. You know, highly nutritious. Um, I can grow these things year-round. These here I've been growing for a few months um, in this system here. I'm getting ready to take them out and clean this up real quick, replant this bed, and get it growing. I'm going to probably do some fruiting crops in here. But um, those have been growing in, uh, in here for a while. I had some other varieties in here. I finished those off, took them out, and these are the last of the Mohicans, right? So we got the Red Harbor kale here growing, and we're talking about probably a minimum of about 55 days, 50 to 55 days for some of the varieties, and then you can just let them you know, keep growing. They'll grow for a while. Uh, 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 they'll grow for a few seasons if you just let them grow and the temperature's right. They won't go to seed. So, Kale is something that I love, love, love to grow. My second favorite crop to grow. Now, it does have some pest problems. The aphids. It's a war going on with me and the aphids. So we do have to duel it out. But because I like growing these so much, you know, it kind of balances out. Because of the pest problem, that's probably the biggest reason why they didn't make number one. Because it does come with some uh, pests that, you know, you have to get in there and go to war with. So, but other than that, I'll cook these, uh, chop them up, put them in some pastas. Um, I'll chop them up uh, and put them, in, uh, put them on top of the stove, cook them with some, um, uh, some fish, some chicken, and um, that's how I like to eat them. I don't really like to eat these things raw when they're mature. I don't like the texture of it nor the taste of it really. It's, you know, it's kind of like a bitter taste, so it's something that you have to get really, really accustomed to. 
some of the, you know, the seeds, super, super seasoned uh, raw uh, uh, vegetable eaters. You guys probably like eating kale raw, but, you know, I'm not at that level when it comes to, the, you know, eating the raw kale when it's mature. So uh, the palate's not developed at that level yet. But nonetheless, I do like uh, dealing with the kale. I'll even put these in some, uh, I'll even juice these things too. So that's the kale. Now coming in at numero uno. The baby salad green. Some of you guys probably already knew that. Now, the baby salad greens. These things are super serious. Super serious. Baby salad greens. When I'm talking about baby salad greens, I'm referring to you put a good amount of seeds on wherever you're, you're growing medium and then you, you allow them to, to, to germinate and sprout so it could be kale it could be collards it could be swiss chard you know whatever you um like to add or eat as a baby salad green you let it sprout and let it grow and as it's you know just in the juvenile stage the baby stage you know small inch three quarters of an inch up to about maybe maybe an inch and a half that's the, the 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 time frame where it needs to be cut right it's super tender it's something that when these are real salads if you haven't had baby salad greens and you haven't really had a salad i'm gonna tell you that right now you haven't really had a salad so you cut these at the small tender is they're tender you can even eat collar i even eat collars like that it's packed with flavor Super, super flavor that's in there. It's something that is, um, that's, it's just something that is really delicious. And it goes well across the tongue, right? So you cut it at that, at that stage and then you put it, put it together, mix them together, uh, put your whatever toppings that you like on your salad and then you eat it like that. These are my favorite vegetables to grow. Absolute favorite. They grow very well, especially in an NFT system. I mainly like to grow them in the NFT system uh, as opposed to the uh, floating raft. I was growing them, I did grow them in the floating raft and they did grow uh, well. But the exceptional growth occurs in the NFT. So that's pretty much why I like to grow them the most. These things right here are always going to be on my list of things to grow. I always have to have a stash of baby salad greens because they're that serious. Baby salad greens, we're talking about somewhere around 21 to 28 days before you harvest. You know, it depends on the season and depends on also what you're growing, the germination time for the, the seed that you're growing. I like to mix them together. I'll mix the kale, the Swiss chard, the collards. I'll mix even, you know, pak choy in there. I'll mix a few varieties in there, make my own salads, you know, and then just snip them right on off. And then boom, I have my salad mix right there. So these are something that you can't go wrong. If you really like salads, you really like your raw vegetables, let me tell you one thing. Kids absolutely love the baby salad greens. When I was growing um, back in 2015, when I used to have the operation open for uh, people to come in, I used to have this one couple that would come in and they had a kid that they say he would not eat no other vegetables. He has to eat the baby salad greens grown from here because they're that delicious. It's something that's easy for, um, you know, kids. If they're, you're trying to get them to eat more vegetable vegetables, it's something for them to easily start getting accustomed to eating because the, you know, the taste is, is kind of mild, but it's smooth. Right? So I love, I love growing those. My daughter, she wiped the floor with those things. She's eating those things like they're candy. Right? So I love growing the baby salad greens. So these are my top 10 favorite vegetables to grow in aquaponics. Now you're gonna have your top 10 um, favorite vegetables to grow as well. This is a subjective list. So everyone's not gonna have the same vegetables that they like to grow, but and it's also gonna depend on your climate, you know, how much work you have to put in when you're growing the vegetable um, to get the results that you wanna get. So um, if you, you know, if you haven't grown some of these vegetables on the list, you know, consider growing some of them uh, you know, um, uh, seeing how they taste, seeing how they go in your diet. And then, uh, maybe some of you guys will like, you know, you, you guys will like some of the vegetables that are on this list. So with that being said, this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the school of aquaponics reminding you to stop walking and get you a car. <laughs>